Today is Wednesday, October 21st, and this is a post-market review for the stock market activities today. We have a lot on the menu today. Even though it was a pretty muted day in the market overall, we are still in range waiting for the outcome of the stimulus fiasco. But while we wait patiently, we do have important news to cover and we have earnings. Do you like earnings? Because I got some for you today. Furthermore, I forgot to talk about the Uber story yesterday. So we'll talk about it today instead because I live in California and I know everything that I need to know about Proposition 22. We'll talk about that in the news segment. And of course, we do have the charts and we will play Sherlock Holmes again, trying to find out which chart is lying. Is it copper? Is it gold? Is it the dollar index? The VIX? The stock market? Somebody is lying and somebody is telling the truth. And with that being said, here we go. The Dow Industrial Average in the red by 97.97 .97 points. A lot of symmetry here. That would equal to a decline of 0.35%. What's going on in the NASDAQ? In the red as well, 31.80 points or a decline of 0.28%. The S&P 500 in the red, a decline of 7.56 points or 0.22%. Moving on to the sector's performance and right away at number one and catching the gold medal. By far, communication services, aka Facebook. At number two, basic materials. And at number three, financials catching the bronze. What about the laggards of the day? Energy, every rally in energy gets faded right away. And we have industrials and healthcare leading the pack in the downside. What's going on in the futures market? Here is what's going on. When the dollar moves like it did today, significantly to the downside you will see huge moves in the futures market however and this is the mystery here you would think that a decline in the us dollar would benefit oil yet oil is down over four percent today so who's telling the truth here oil the dollar copper gold vix stock market yields somebody's lying and somebody's telling the truth or all of them are lying this is why we have to play Sherlock Holmes. But here it is, copper in metals leading the pack and solidifying the fact that the dollar is down. Massive move for copper. And of course, the media caught up to the move in copper just about right now. Meanwhile, yours truly been saying this for months and months. And I've been a copper bull for a while now. Platinum did very well today. Gold remains the adult in the room and gold doesn't want to make a very large move just like its younger sibling copper before we know what's going on with stimulus and what's going on in meats for a muted day here in meats nothing going on so we move on to softs and you see coca the dollar declines coca gains however it is not the same story for lumbar kofi OJ got whacked today, squeezed pretty hard because the move in the dollar hits OJ pretty hard. And lastly, what's going on with grains? You see notable gains here for soybean oil or soybean meal rather, corn, rough rice bouncing after a couple of days of declines. And we see canola and oats having a pretty good day as well. Again, this is an oversimplification of course, but when the dollar declines, stuff that we export in increases in value, stuff that we import declines in value due to the exchange rate. And moving on to the big casino, the options market. And look at that, Snapchat beating Apple. Apple been supreme on the first place consistently every day, but the gambling in Apple is cooling off and Snapchat took the first place today. About 1.2 million contracts traded in Snapchat today. Massive gains for the name on the heels of its earnings report yesterday. And of course, about 62% of those were calls. Apple at number two, 988,000 contracts. 67% of those were calls. Tesla at number three, oh, about 727,000 contracts traded today. 
63% of those were calls. Yet the trades in Snapchat were scattered all over the place. They were not concentrated just like we see in Apple. So the volume leader for today was the 118 call for Apple expiring this coming Friday. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any interesting trades for you or interesting notes in the change in open interest because we are in the heart of earnings season and the majority of the moves are related to earnings pre and post. So things could be distorted and we are now in a full functioning casino in the options market people making bets with no intelligence whatsoever so the value when you see changes in open interest or interesting trades the value of these trades get diluted due to the gambling of earnings season so we will move along to the headlines that shape the day starting with a stimulus fiasco and right away in the morning propaganda minister larry kudlow was on television and the propaganda minister was saying that today feels like a good day like an optimistic day whatever that means and of course he says that the recovery in the economy is immeasurable it is immeasurable because it is imaginable propaganda minister and before the day even started goldman sachs issued a statement and said that the probability of a stimulus deal passing before the election is pretty much impossible it is slim to none the market didn't care it decided to pop in the morning then give it all up and it was a roller coaster ride throughout the day and the example here of course we had another nancy pump midday nancy said that she's very happy with how the negotiation and the talks are going furthermore nancy said that she is very much interested and want to deal before the elections and you saw the market pop in right away a huge pump in the indices all over the market but that pump lasted about two seconds because in the same breath nancy said oh but mcconnell doesn't want it i want a deal mnuchin wants a deal but mcconnell doesn't want it and mcconnell of course is gonna blame it on romney and romney is gonna blame it on somebody else we're gonna play this game over and over again and by the way as the day progressed the democrats schumer announcing that they rejected mcconnell's bill and they voted it down this is the skinny bill the half a trillion bucks skinny bill i wonder what the obese bill price tag is and the white house said that they're optimistic about being optimistic about being optimistic that the next 48 hours might produce a deal remember that we started the week with nancy's ultimatum the 48 hours deadline and that deadline ex got extended by another 48 hours and this deadline will get extended by another 48 hours and another 48 hours and another 48 hours i will be waiting and waiting and waiting until all your options expire worthless so the best thing you can do right now stay the hell out of the market until you know what the shot is and the last thing we heard regarding the stimulus is that nancy and mnuchin will talk again at 2 30 eastern time and we haven't heard any update from that call yet they've been talking and talking and talking 50 minutes call each day what the hell are they talking about at 20 minutes call we put me to sleep and these two talk 50 minutes each day about the same thing over and over again moving on to some company specific news we heard from paypal in the morning that they will allow crypto trading in their platform and they're of course targeting younger investors so now you can make it easier for russian hackers to rob your kids it's not enough that they rob their robin hood account now they can rob their paypal account too and of course we saw paypal surging today how about the vaccine trials what's going on with the vaccine trials we do have a patient in brazil in the astrazeneca trial who died but no biggie the authorities decided to resume the trials again and uh, i don't know about you but that certainly gives me a lot of confidence when I go stretch my arm to get shot with the vaccine, that the side effects might include death. No biggie. And speaking of death, let's look at what GM did to the new Hummer EV. Right away, it will cost you over 112,000 bucks to ride 
in the Hummer EV. And it certainly doesn't look like a 112,000 bucks car. And I don't know what's going on with the design department in General Motors, but they certainly need new glasses because this is one of the most ugliest cars that I've ever seen in my life. And I got pictures for you. And I don't know, this might grow on you at some point, who knows, but it is certainly looking very ugly here. And remember the geniuses in GM, the design department who gave you the Malibu and the Impala, which all look like cheap rental cars. GM has a bright future ahead of it if they concentrate on EVs and self-driving vehicles. But for the love of God, hire some new designers. Moving on to Uber. What's going on with Uber and Proposition 22 in California. If you live in California like I do, you've been bombarded by Uber and the ride-sharing lobby about Proposition 22. They want you to vote yes on 22 so they can keep paying their drivers pennies on the dollar. And the CEO went on air yesterday or gave a statement yesterday, whatever it is, and he said it is no biggie. Even if the proposition fails and we have to make every driver into a permanent employee or full-time employee with healthcare benefits, it's not a big deal because we will raise prices and we'll pass the cost to the consumer. And you saw shares of Uber riding higher yesterday, but today they're giving some of those gains up. I remain bearish in Uber in the short term all the way until the elections and I am buying the 35 puts. I will hold them all the way until the elections because if it wasn't a big deal, then why is Uber spending over 200 million bucks in ads and propaganda in the state of California to pass Proposition 22? And Uber of course started doing some uh, cute tricks in the beginning giving you push notifications on your phone, reminding you to vote yes for 22. Otherwise, you're not gonna have Uber anymore in your state. And even when you order an Uber, you have a cute sticker there telling you to vote yes for Proposition 22. And it was cute in the beginning, but it's getting a little annoying here because they're giving you notifications every five minutes. And I think they're gonna piss people off and it might fire back this strategy of flooding the airwave and people's phones with reminders to vote yes on 22. Matter of fact, according to the polls, Proposition 22 only passing by 3% right now. And if you ever learned anything in politics, you should know this fact. Never underestimate the stupidity of the average Californian voter because We've been voting against our own interest for the last 50 years. And the Californian voter is easily deceived. Case in point, of course, and this is the nasty business that Uber is doing. They got caught bribing the NAACPWHYZ president who've been pushing and encouraging people to vote yes on 22. And when we dig further, we found that the president of the NAACPWYZ is getting paid by, you guessed it, Uber. So Uber is going full force here. Nasty business, dirty politics, it doesn't matter. Yet the CEO is telling us it is not a big deal if the proposition doesn't pass. Who do you believe? And the last bit of news we're gonna cover right now, we do have the IMF saying that the world's economic recovery is likely to be long, uneven, and uncertain. I don't know if that's a euphemism for a V-shaped recovery, because they've been telling us that we're gonna have a V-shaped recovery, and now they're saying, oh, it's gonna be long, uneven, and uncertain, and the V might turn into a W, into an M, into an O, we don't know. And now let's move on to cover some earnings reports that we got today. Of course, we got Verizon in the morning, but Verizon is not a market mover, and this is why we're not covering Verizon. It is a dividend stock, and either you own it or you don't. But we do have Tesla, and Tesla, very notable here, that of course, they are a nonprofit company, literally, because check out the regulatory credit that Tesla received in the third quarter of 2020. It amounts to 397 million bucks. And when you go down and you look at their gap net income, gap means the non-fraud accounting because Tesla is very famous for their accounting fraud. So the no fraud accounting gives you a net income of 331 
million bucks. Now take the 397 million in regulatory credits and you have the company reporting a loss of about 66 million bucks. So here we have a company that is not profitable yet and it's still trading at over 400 billion bucks. The mania continues in Tesla for now. And last time I checked, of course, the name is up about 3% or so. I'm not sure if that's going to hold tomorrow because remember, Tesla rallies were pretty much due to short covering in the past. Right now, we don't have shorts. Shorts are pretty much an extinct species when it comes to Tesla. They're scared of shorting the stock. So what will push the stock higher? Call options activities that we might see some of that tomorrow but again if we do see some tesla shareholders dumping due to a disappointment or they're not seeing the profitability future in tesla coming as soon as they've been advertising you could see selling of shares tomorrow morning so we'll see what happens but it is of course notable that tesla never provides the regional breakdown of their sales so you never know how many cars they sold in china north america europe etc they don't do that they're very secretive about the results however you have to be fair and give credit where credit is due look at their automotive revenue alone with no regulatory credit they've reported about 7.6 billion bucks in revenue you compare that with 5.5 billion bucks in revenue year over year the company is growing there is no doubt of that however is it worth is this growth worth over 400 billion bucks already that is the question moving on to chipotle let's see of course this is a restaurant fast food restaurant that is trading as a tech company and last time i checked the name is down after the bell and it is very simple here of course they don't give you the quarter itself the results for the quarter itself they give you the three months results and as you can see, they've grown in the revenue, specifically the delivery revenue. However, there are two sides for the coin of COVID. Yes, COVID accelerated the fast food ordering business. A lot of restaurants like McDonald's and Chipotle benefited tremendously from that trend. However, the flip side of the coin is that expenses increased as well. Not just the prices for the raw materials in this case, the ingredients, but also the cost of sanitizing and keeping the restaurants clean and paying employees extra wages. All of that, of course, took a hit to Chipotle's bottom line. As you can see, the net income year over year is down significantly. And this is what is disappointing the shares after the bill, especially giving the overvaluation in the name to begin with. Moving on. To Whirlpool earnings, right away you see that their sales are up about 4%. That means that the trend of home improvement and buying new appliances is still there. It is slowing down, but it is still with us. And last time I checked, Whirlpool stock is trading higher after hours. Now it is notable to see where that growth in sales came from. You will be surprised by the results. Did it come from North America? Not really, because sales in North America are down 1.6%. What about Asia? Did it come from Asia? No, sales in Asia down 1.4%. So where did it come from? Here we go. Latin America, the net sales are up 13.7%. And when we go to Europe, Middle East and Africa, the sales are up 15.4%. So the trends, the consumer behavioral trends that you saw earlier taking place here in the United States are now being replicated in other regions in the world. Very interesting finding here. Moving on to Las Vegas Sands and we've seen notable bullish activities in the options market regarding Las Vegas Sands. We've seen lots of bullish bets betting that the name will produce positive earnings. Now, we know that the revenues and profits will be miserable. Nobody's going to judge them based on that. But we want to see in the casino business, specifically, Las Vegas Sands is not revenue, profits, margins, occupancy rates, none of that. We just want to see that the worst is behind us and that the losses are not accelerating. And what we find out here from Las Vegas Sands earning that they're turning the tide now in favor of the name. And you see losses de-accelerating quarter over quarter in all 
territories, whether it's China or Marina Bay, Las Vegas, the losses for this quarter, the third quarter, were much less than the losses of the second quarter. And in fact, for Marina Bay Sands, they actually managed to post positive EBITDA. Right away, you see that the picture is getting better for the casino industry here at least from this one name alone. Nonetheless, you will see names like MGM and Wynn Resorts rallying tomorrow on the heels of Las Vegas Sands results. Let's check on another name here, Abbott Laboratories, which reported in the morning. The name was down over 2% today, yet they reported positive earnings across the board. And the most important thing we were watching here is their new testing kit, the rapid COVID-19 testing kit and all in all the sales came at 881 million bucks for all of their testing equipments but notably of course the product we've been watching which is called the Binax now this is the rapid COVID-19 test it costs five bucks and it gives you the results in 15 minutes Abbott showing impressive growth here across the board but the name ran really hot and you see some profit taking today now if we see the name dropping further in the days to come that would be an opportunity to buy shares in Abbott laboratories and the last two earnings for chips we do have lamb research lamb research of course growing very hot quarter over quarter year over year the revenues are growing impressively yet last time I checked Lamb Research is trading in the red after hours. It is no surprise here. The name ran really, really hot and it is trading at an insane valuation right now, historically speaking, for Lamb Research. So it is reasonable for the name to take a break from this point. And this is very usual. If you have a stock that has been running hot, all times highs, growing double digits year over year. Even if you have impressive results, just like Lamb Research reported, you still run the risk of the stock selling off after reporting earnings. And the last bit of earnings we're covering today is from Xilinx. Now, Xilinx is a different story because year over year, they're not growing. They're actually losing in net revenues, net income. Their net income actually dropped double digits. The name, last time I checked, trading in the green after hours just by a little bit, but I don't think that these gains will hold because the results are not impressive at all. You have to remember that this is a name that rallied really hard too. Yet unlike LAM Research, it is not delivering any growth year over year. I expect a sell-off in Xilinx here. And now, moving on to the heat map analysis. And right away, you see Google rising on uh, antitrust lawsuit optimism. And Facebook, of course, the notable gainer of the day due to the earnings from Snapchat. And you see names, even Spotify rallying on the heels of Facebook or rather Snapchat. Snapchat told us that the ad business is coming back for online social media platforms that will benefit Facebook and Google on theory, of course. We still have to see their individual results to confirm this thesis. PayPal, you see PayPal in the lower left corner of the screen in the bright green color because PayPal had a massive upside day today due to the news, of course, that we covered in the headline segment regarding them offering crypto services we saw some gains in regional banks because yields are up again in addition to notable gains in gold and copper due to the decline in the us dollar now looking for the notable decliners here we do see goldman sachs and morgan stanley morgan stanley had a pretty good week last week today they're giving all of that up both names are down over two percent today abbott abbott down over two percent we covered that and you saw notable weakness in the biotech sector and the healthcare sector in general because we have another flop from Eli Lilly and you see Eli Lilly down about 1.6 percent today and notable weakness here for momentum names in the software sector Zoom Peloton DocuSign Shopify all the hot names are getting dumped today very interesting action and Uber look at Uber had a big gain yesterday today giving it 
back up. Not quite everything, but about half of the gains from yesterday. Texas Instruments in the red on the heels of their earnings yesterday. I told you I'm not impressed by the 1% growth year over year. It doesn't justify where the stock is. And you saw Texas down, AMD down, Xilinx down. Intel managed to close in the green. Intel has earnings coming up tomorrow. What about Square? You see Square declining significantly today. The opposite picture of PayPal Square declining along with the other momentum names. Netflix, not a surprise here due to their earnings yesterday, not meeting subscribers' expectations or earnings expectations. But let's shed some color here and cover the rotation trade. And right away you see a mixed picture across the board for the momentum stay at home names and for the comeback reopening stocks as well the notable decline in the momentum names hit the overvalued names the hot names such as peloton zoom docusign shopify got hit pretty hard facebook and google are the notable outperformers today on the other side of the aisle the picture also negative but you see some outperformers today such as cheesecake factory it's been outperforming for a while now general motors disney and planet fitness and now moving on to the technical analysis of the charts and of course a disclaimer here that we had a very boring muted day so we will not cover some daily charts we will just cover the 15 minutes chart because most of the trading was in range and let's start with covering the 15 minutes chart of the s p 500 the spy as you can see today's action started with a big candle up and we went back and forth back and forth we had a mini nancy pump midday that failed right away and faded and you see the typical sell-off at the end of the day every time we pump the market just by a little bit and we reach the afternoon and we don't hear about the deal from the call and the talks about the calls about the talks the market sells off nobody wants to carry the risk of a no deal announcement after market but the notable action here is the level of support of 342.39 holding twice today that is very notable and you see that the appetite for selling is not there yet nobody wants to sell nobody wants to buy until we hear what's going on with the stimulus deal now here is the take suppose we wake up in the morning and we see the spy trading below 342.39 or 40 you can round it up it is within that range if we see the spy trading below it that would be negative and will trigger a further flush down we will look for new support levels we'll discuss that when we get there but you can refer back to the previous resistance and support levels that we had the spy will use them again as a reference to stop if we see a flush down now a pop higher will also face a resistance at the 346 85 point that you see on the chart right in front of you so we're again bounded by a range but we are at the lower end we closed at the lower end of the range that is notable moving on to the queues likewise we did not do anything here in the queues we just did an m formation going back and forth within range and you see of course the level of 286.30 being a pivotal point here once you break above it it acts a good support once you break below it it acts as good resistance and you see that illustrated very clearly in the charts we are in no man's land and now grab your glasses, your magnifiers, and your investigator hat, because we're going to look and try to find at which chart is lying to us, starting with the dollar index, 15 minutes perspective. The dollar index had a complete collapse overnight. It broke through the important level of support of 93 bucks that level should have held and breaking below it throws the abc pattern we talked about out of the window so is the dollar faking it here trying to fool us into thinking that the dollar would collapse equities would rally certainly possible and the dollar pulled many fake moves before in its history but looking at the chart as it is right now it is showing notable weakness and if the dollar can speak it is telling us that there is a stimulus deal before elections is it lying we'll see what about the vix 
What is the VIX saying? You can see right away that the VIX is still trading in range between the support of 25 and the resistance of 30 and a half. Today it reached all the way to the resistance line and it reversed and it gave it all up. It is notable the VIX and the dollar right now telling us that there is a stimulus deal. At least from today's action alone. The dollar giving that signal clearer than the VIX. The VIX is just giving you a one day signal. But before that it's been saying that there is no deal. So the strongest support for a deal on stimulus comes from the dollar chart. Let's check on gold. Is gold telling us something different? Not really. Gold was muted, had an update, but it's still muted, meeting the 1925 resistance and closing below it. The only name reacting in correlation with the move of the dollar is copper. Copper and the dollar are telling us that there is a stimulus deal. Oil, the VIX, gold and equities are mixed. They're not saying one way or the other and oil specifically told us there is no deal on stimulus today. Moving on to yields, the TNX and yields as we expected did the ABC pattern, the bullish pattern and yields is also telling you there is a stimulus deal. Very interesting. And here is the last chart I want to cover of Peloton because Peloton had a weak day today declining severely during the day and after the bell. What you're looking at is a weekly chart. Now notice how many green candles, weekly candles we've seen in the last few weeks. Almost all of them are green. And this week is shaping to be the first red candle in the last 10 weeks. So this name being flying higher and higher and higher every day with no stop in sign. Here is the problem. We've seen a bearish engulfing candle before from a weekly perspective as I'm highlighting on the chart and that turns out to be a fake catching the bears and the shorts in a trap and forcing them to cover and fuel the rally higher. Are we seeing the same thing here? Possible, but it is worth taking a shot here I'm buying put options or shorting Peloton and if you own Peloton perhaps this is the time to stop being a greedy pig. And now let's move on to conclude the video. The divergences and the confusion goes on. Equities fluctuating between a deal and no deal on stimulus moving on the tune of the flow of news. Dollar, the US dollar is saying we're gonna have a deal. Yields are saying we're gonna have a deal. Copper is saying we're gonna have a deal. The VIX, gold, oil saying we're not sure. Perhaps there is no deal. One of these two camps is lying. One of these two camps is giving us a false signal. Which one is it? You know that I have to be consistent and I trust King Dollar. King Dollar is saying we're gonna have a deal. So I do trust King Dollar that we will have a deal. The problem is that the dollar is also famous for pulling massive tricks and making everybody look like a bunch of fools. Combine that with the information that we do have. A surge in shorting the dollar and the VIX. Any bad news here could fuel an epic rally in the dollar and the VIX which will make everybody look like a bunch of fools. So what do you do here? Do you go in the ride and experience the whiplash back and forth, deal, no deal? Personally, I don't want to be in that kind of ride. I'd rather keep my long positions in terms of stocks as they are, taking profits while I can in some names that ran hot, but not making any major moves in terms of buying or opening new significant options positions. Because even if you are the greatest analyst and you can see things where others can, you will not be able to guess the outcome of the stimulus deal unless you are close to Nancy. Unless Nancy tips you off, you have no clue where the market's gonna go. It's as simple as that. So let's move on and cover some earnings that we will have tomorrow and do an earnings preview instead of guessing. We do have right away Coca-Cola, AT&T, American Airlines, Southwest 
and Intel. I do own Coca-Cola and we want to see any signs and indications of a recovery. We know that stadiums open here in the US and other countries granted in limited capacity, but we saw reopenings in restaurants and other countries also opening gatherings in other forms, which should recover and fuel the sales of Coke. We've seen the recovery in Las Vegas Sands. Now I know we're comparing apples and oranges here. One is a casino, another is a beverage company. But if we're seeing the tides turning here globally for the casino business, it translates into shifting back to normalcy and reopening. That should be positive for Coca. Cola. What about AT&T? Anything new here in AT&T? Of course, we're looking for an update about the restructuring and selling some business units. We could have a surprise here, surprise announcement for AT&T. We'll keep that in mind. There's a lot of interest here in buying AT&T due to the cheap price and the high dividend. So this will be an interesting name to watch in the morning. American Airlines is the weakest name in the airline sector. We need to see their cash burn being reduced significantly. The market is not going to judge them based on revenue or earnings. We know the picture is miserable. We want to see that the cash burn has been at least cut in half. Other than that, you will see American Airlines crashing because it is the weakest link in the airlines sector. The opposite picture is for Southwest because Southwest is the strongest name in the business. So the expectations here are a little higher for Southwest to meet. We are not very concerned about the cash burn in Southwest. We're concerned about their numbers in terms of passenger flights. We want to see a recovery in the numbers of domestic passengers traveling with Southwest and opening new destinations, specifically in Chicago. I will be watching this very closely because I am interested in adding Southwest to my portfolio. And the last name here, which I am also interested in adding into my portfolio because it offers a lot of value. Intel. Intel had a miserable earnings report last time around. They pretty much waved the white flag and the stock came crashing down severely and significantly. So the expectations are very low here and it is easy for Intel to beat. They just have to show us some confidence and stability in their report and the direction they're shifting toward. All they have to do is to say that we are shifting from the old business units of memory and the likes, and we will follow the playbook of AMD and Nvidia, and we will go into the gaming business and concentrate on gaming from this point on. And you will see the name rallying significantly. So again, I'm watching Intel and I'm looking to add it to my portfolio. So tomorrow is an important day to watch. That's all I got for you. I know it was a muted day and there was very little to cover, but we try to do our best here. And thank you for watching. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button and follow me on social media.